Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Friends, I must confess that in our channel, when we talk about HIV coverage, I think I have been very partial to American gene technologies. Uh, understandable because they have been uh, very friendly with us and they have been giving us information and they have exciting technology. So we have done plenty of coverage of American gene technologies. And most of uh, our audience keeps asking me about what's happening with EBT, uh, what's happening with the Tel Aviv vaccine. So people are asking those questions. Now, in today's video, I'm going to answer those things. And I'm also going to cover EBT 101 afresh, just giving you a fresh perspective of how exciting EBT 101 is. Because so far, we have been talking mostly about AGT 103-T. So let's get started. Welcome back, friends. So when I uh, search for more information on the Tel Aviv vaccine, I come to a dead end because I think after... Uh, August 2022 or June 2022, I think there has been no news from um, the Tel Aviv vaccine team, at least none that I have seen, uh, despite looking for it actively. And um, I have made many outreach uh, by email and through people uh, to to reach the team to get some interviews or uh, some insights. And uh, I've not been successful out there. Uh, obviously, they are busy with their own work. So as soon as I get some information on that, I'll definitely make a video. That said, let's talk about uh, Excision Bio and their EBT-101. So EBT-101 is also a very exciting um, uh, therapy in the making. And um, uh, the way I would explain that is um, uh, there is a good potential that EBT-101, when successful, could become a sterilizing cure. And that's the most exciting part about EBT-101. Because what EBT-101 tries to do as a strategy is, first of all, it tries to disable the gene that enables the uh, CCR5 receptor in the CD4 T cell. So this is the first part of their operation. The second part of the operation uh, is to get into cells where uh, HIV has infected and embedded itself uh, into the human genome. And uh, then from there, uh, it snips off the portion of the HIV uh, genome that is responsible for creating the GAG protein. The GAG protein, uh, if you know, is the one that uh, HIV uses to latch onto the CD4 T cell and perforate the uh, membrane of the CD4 and download its uh, RNA into the CD4 cell and start the infection process. So in their latest research, um, uh, Khalili's team conducted experiments on humanized mice. Uh, they took the humanized uh, mice and infected them with uh, HIV and uh, let the HIV incubate for two weeks. And then the mice were divided into six groups and treated with different combination of therapies. And one of the groups had no therapies. For example, the therapies included laser art, which is a combination of uh, cabotegravir, uh, rilpivirine, uh, lamivudine, and uh, abacavir. And uh, they also had um, uh, another treatment where they had CRISPR targeting CCR5 receptors, which is part of EBT-101 and CRISPR cutting out integrated uh, proviral HIV from the DNA. So one group received no treatment at all. One group received both CRISPR tools without laser art, and one group received uh, art, and uh, one group received art along with uh, proviral HIV CRISPR, and another group received art along with CCR5 CRISPR, uh, which goes and removes the um, uh, CCR5 gene and deactivates the CCR5 in the CD4 cell. And the final group received all three. Uh, that is uh, laser art, uh, that is uh, removing the CCR5, uh, disabling the CCR5 receptor genes, and um, also uh, excising the uh, GAG protein-related um, uh, sequence in the HIV virus uh, in various uh, cells of the body. So all groups treated with laser art showed suppression of virus and restoration of CD4 cells. The group that received all three therapies had the highest CD4 cell counts. In the triple therapy group, the replication co uh, competent virus was eliminated in the majority of mice. So 
they are looking at around a 58% success rate out there. The researchers used highly sensitive tests to examine different organs and could not detect intact HIV in the blood, uh, in the spleen or in the lungs, kidneys or liver or gut or bone marrow or brain. Uh, in contrast, untreated mice and those that uh, that experience viral rebound still showed residual HIV. There are no observed toxic effects of CRISPR targeting in any of the treated mice. So that's a very good news. Now, uh, with this success under their belt, uh, they are proceeding to uh, experiment on uh, uh, monkeys. So they are going to look at uh, monkey models and um, try to uh, replicate the success that they saw in humanized mice models. And if that happens, that sets the stage for phase two uh, clinical trial. EBT is currently in phase one clinical trials with the trial started on March 2023. It's going to be a five year uh, study and uh, patients are being uh, onboarded and um, uh, treated. Uh, and uh, with the uh, combination therapy that um, uh, the excision is going to try on monkey models, uh, that could give a even more um, stronger prospect, uh, in my opinion. And uh, the, the way I understand the results, it seems like this is working towards a sterilizing cure. Uh, in uh, in most of the cases, we had a 58% success rate in the uh, mice, which was given combination therapy. So I'm thinking that uh, with dosage modification and um, uh, extra treatments, uh, probably different protocols can emerge for treating uh, and uh, imparting sterilizing cure. So that's, that's the most optimistic uh, outlook that I can uh, project uh, as far as uh, EBT 101 is concerned based on my understanding. And friends, I'm not a scientist or a doctor or anything, so uh, take my uh, words with a pinch of salt, but I have tried my best to uh, uh, try to understand the results. And uh, to me, it seems like EBT 101 is, our, is the best shot uh, that uh, scientists have towards a sterilizing cure for HIV at this point of time. And I'm especially impressed with the m uh, mice model results. And I'm looking forward to see what results come out of the monkey model. So that, my friends, is an update on EBT 101. I'm afraid I didn't have anything new to talk to you about because we have covered these things in our uh, earlier video, maybe six months ago or something. The only update is the uh, March 2023 start of uh, phase one clinical trial. And um, so that, that's the only update I have in uh, new in this video. Otherwise, it's almost a repeat of what I had mentioned uh, earlier. But we'll uh, keep a close eye on what is happening with Excision Bio. They have a promising technology. And uh, the, the best thing is that there has been no off-base edits and there has been no toxicity associated with the, um, uh, with the CRISPR uh, mechanisms used in this therapy. So that's a, uh, that's a very big positive. So with that, my friends, I'd like to bring this video to an end. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, I hope this gives a hope to a lot of people out there that uh, uh, sterilizing cure is also on the way. How soon it will come is something that we can all speculate about. Uh, given that it's a CRISPR therapy and given that it's excising a retrovirus from the DNA, I suspect that the FDA is going to look um, for all kinds of data. So there will be a little bit of extra time needed for that, in my opinion. And uh, the other thing is that the longer they test the patients, they will be able to uh, uh, ensure that they can um, they can actually declare the true potential uh, of uh, EBT 101 in the sense that how long uh, does the effect last and whether it's actually a sterilizing cure uh, uh, where once cured there is no infection uh, in the patient so um, uh, or, or relapse or you know some kind of residual uh, areas uh, which um, which have not been excised of HIV maybe that regenerates so they would like to uh, cover all the bases so I am suspecting that they would have long-term uh, studies uh, in order to provide a greater deal of certainty of efficacy of this uh, particular therapy. And of course, phase two is always about uh, efficacy, whereas phase one is for safety. So it will all depend on uh, how deep uh, Excision Bio wants to go and how much information uh, FDA needs. So we should be prepared to look at a five to six year time frame for uh, phase two uh, once after it starts. And uh, we already know that phase one is going to have a longer uh, duration. 
let's wait and see what happens there will be intermittent release of uh, data during various conferences that will give us a window into uh, the progress with that my friends i'd like to bring this video to an end i hope you like this and if you have not yet joined our uh, our uh, patreon uh, community uh, please uh, join it uh, as soon as possible and uh, support us in uh, being able to come to you with more of these uh, HIV related topics. We have a wealth of HIV related topics in our channel and uh, it's, it takes a lot of efforts to make these videos. That's why I do once a week. Uh, but with your support, I'll be able to get some more assistance uh, to keep this venture going. Uh, we need more Patreons to join us and here is an appeal directly to you that please join our Patreon and continue to give us your support so that we can bring more HIV programming to you. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.